It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their family. Now here's your host, Ken Rollins. Welcome into Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here. Appreciate you tuning in today. Today's guest has been on here before. This is March. This is uh, Traumatic Brain Injury Month, so we're going to be talking with Josh Kraft. Stay where you are. Get you a pen. Be right back. Welcome back into Veterans Issues. Welcome back in Yodel in there. Welcome back to Veterans Issues, Ken Rollins. Today we're talking with Josh Kraft. Josh is here to talk about traumatic brain injury we're called TBI. The month of March is that uh, we, we remember it during uh, during this much every year. Welcome to the show, Josh. Thank you for having me, Ken. Good to have you back again. It's uh, been a, a year, was it? Was it last year? Yes, last All year. Right. Last April, I think. That, that works. Okay, we were late last time. A little bit. We won't do it no more. You've had a traumatic brain injury. Uh, I kind of remember vaguely about what happened, but for the people out there that don't know, including myself, give me the detail. When, when did it happen and how did it? Uh, it'll be 13 years in June, uh, the first part of June. Uh, I was, working for, the, <clears throat> I was uh, working for the city of Oxford and uh, fell off the back of a truck while working for them and something came and bopped me on the head. and So I spent, uh, Couple weeks at Caraway in a coma, and then I went to uh, Atlanta for uh, rehab. Well, when you when you fell off the truck, I mean, you do you remember all this happening? Uh, I am actually, I know some of the folks that uh, have had injuries don't remember years before their accident, and I've met those people, but I remember about an hour before my accident. And then when's is, the next thing you remember to ask today? Uh, the next thing I remember, uh, and it's vague, is Ricky Howell taking me by ambulance from Birmingham to Atlanta. The EMT. Yeah. Oxford so, EMS. Mm -hmm. And mom and dad were uh, riding in the ambulance with me. Yeah. So you, from the time you failed everything, it was not that long a period of time you remember then the ambulance ride. Uh, yeah, it was about three weeks from my accident until uh, I went to Atlanta. Okay, so you're talking about the EMS taking you to Atlanta. To, from Birmingham to Atlanta, So yeah. there was a period of time, so there's a week or so there you didn't... This is about you, three weeks when I was in a coma, which yeah. I don't... You don't remember, remember none of that. Mm -mm. See, I remember uh, your kin folks and stuff. I know some of them, and they were... Uh, there was not the, the prognosis. And, uh, the, there was times that I remember they was not didn't know what was going to happen, they, how you were going to do. And I think that probably any TBI whether it's got in the military or whatever, the time only tells what really happened in a lot of them. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I've learned is, uh, and, and I am, you know, and I'm still coping with things today. It's been 13 years almost, and I still am learning new things about my injury and how I can deal with some things that I have going on that are uh, related <coughs> to my TBI. I've had a guy on here as a Marine Corps, Matt Bine, a lot of people know Matt. Uh, my first experience with TBI was he was in Afghanistan, the explosive device, the improvised explosive device got him. Uh, one of the things is memory, short-term memory. For example, like we were out in the green room, we could be having a discussion for the show. By showtime, he couldn't remember that discussion. That Do you ever have any memory um, left problem? I don't have that because I've you know I've 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 had some really good therapists in my life and uh, they've helped me kind of cope with that as well. I do have short-term memory issues. I think that's every uh, traumatic every brain TBI, injury yeah. survivor that I have met has short-term memory issues. Yeah. But again, there are ways through therapy and through letting you know the therapist work with you that you can cope with that. Like planners, writing things down. I live and die by my. Uh, iPhone, like even today for uh, me coming here, I've had that in my phone for two weeks, mm -hmm. and I've had it every day, just to remind myself not to schedule anything. Well, today. you're not married, so you probably. But some of the guys that's coming back, I don't think you're married, are you? No. Okay. No. The guys coming back from Afghanistan with TBI. Uh, one of the things is not just for themselves to get well, but to get the people around them well. And what I mean by that is where they understand that you're not the same person, that you, 
that you're not forgetting by choice. You know, they, oh, you, you remember that? No, I don't. Yes, you do. I told you to do that yesterday. No, I didn't. And they really, they think it's like selective forgetfulness or something like that, you know. So it, it affects marriages when people have TBIs. People don't understand it. Well, that's what I have uh, figured too because I have, I have dealt with that. And I'll have things that I remember telling people and they say, no, Josh, you never told me that. Yeah. I say, yeah, I swear I did, but you know that. Well, everybody ain't go got back. a TBI. Well, forget, and, so. yeah, and and what I do now though is I try to document. You know, if it's something important that somebody needs to know, is I'll try to document that on a notepad that I have yeah. or something, and I'll write it down. You know, I told so and so this on this day, just to make sure that you know if it comes back to it, then you know I've got written documentation. That, <laughs> you know. Have you ever? Uh, this is something come to mind. When have you ever went into a <clears throat> like having therapy and there's other people there. Have you ever talked to a, a group or individuals about don't worry about where you are now? I was there and now I'm here. Have you ever been able to like motivational thing? Yeah, we have uh, the Alabama Head Injury Foundation, which is a uh, peer support for uh, TBI uh, survivors. You just lost a director here a couple of years ago. I was trying to think. Uh, Dr. Priest. Yeah. Yeah, he passed away. Yeah, he was on the show here. We're talking. Mm -hmm. And Go ahead, you. Uh, we talk about things, and I've told them, you know, there's there's always things that we're going to learn. And I will say this: I was uh, hurt 13 years ago, and in the 13 years from my accident to today, they are a hundred thousand miles ahead of where they were with treatment. And hopefully, in 13 years from now, they'll be a hundred thousand miles away from where they are today because they are learning so much about the brain and how it works. And they still know so little about it because it's such a complex organ. But we, uh, I've always told them it's always an uphill battle. We're always going to be, you know, striding uphill. But we always have to have hope that we're going to be doing better. And there are ways, you know, and with thanks be to God, I have a great family. I have a great friends. Mm -hmm. And they have always, you know, been a great support group for me. Well, you just said something. We don't have to worry about it here. We're not politically correct, but you just said something that, that I really believe in. You said, thanks be to God. I know you to be a Christian that really believes in uh, that uh, you had some help getting to where you are right now. Would you not attest to that, that, that God had a, a big part to play where you are right now? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I've well, The biggest part. I've had a lot of things go wrong with me, but God's yeah. always uh, stayed by me. And yeah. Taking care even, of even me. when you're being more ugly. than yeah more than I ever deserve. Have you uh, have you know of anything that's that uh, here today, 13 years later, that maybe if for not for the uh, TBI, you might be doing some this rather than this, or is there anything that you've given up that you? You know, I try not to. Well, and you know, and one of the biggest things for me was football. Yeah, I love to play. You think football. you would have been a quarterback for what? The Rams or the? Well, we don't know where the Rams are playing this year. <laughs> are they playing in St. Louis, Los I gotta Angeles? I got to go break. You think about that while I go to the commercial. We'll come back. We're going to find out what <laughs> what Josh has been doing. Stay where you are. Get a pen. We got back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. We're talking with Josh Kraft, and he's a traumatic brain injury survivor, uh, TBI, being TBI month. Josh, when we left, I was asking you what you wanted to be. What would you have done different? You didn't. You didn't come up with anything. You didn't want to be no Superman. You wanted to play football, but I, I don't know that you'd have been. You'd have been the quarterback of the Steelers or something like that. <laughs> you could always say Maybe that. Maybe the water boy. <laughs> the water. <laughs> but you, you know that's an important that. part. Yeah. Well, see, we have the show here goes out on YouTube and it goes to Switzerland, and place like that. And the only person that, and if somebody in Switzerland watches every week. And if you're out there watching in uh, Switzerland this week, I know who you are. It's Shania Twain. She's stalking me. <laughs> and uh, I can't <laughs> see for sure, but I just got, I know she had a place in Switzerland. So that's my story. So you might have been that football player. Just stick with that story. I would have been, next time somebody asked her, I'd have probably been a quarterback for the Steelers or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but, you know, and I mean, and back to football, though. As I started, you know, and I grew up around football all, all my life. My dad coached uh, the junior varsity team, and I've been around it all my life. But I found a way to deal with that, and they let me coach with them. Mm -hmm. And I love coaching. 
Uh, I see you down on Lamar Field. Yeah, maybe I'll get. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Maybe I I'll get you down there. I harassing the football player. <laughs> well, some of the, well, some of my players might have thought I was <laughs> harassing them. But, you know, it, it, and I would not trade coaching for playing, though, because I there's just a lot more uh, re uh, reward. Somebody in the studio audience mentioned during the break we were talking about how close it was uh, when you uh, the notifying the family. I mean, you weren't aware of all this, but uh, I was from a distance was aware that you might not pull through this. I mean, there was a there was a big concern there that you would have got it. So for you to be here today, I think it's a borderline miracle to say the to say the least that uh, that we know there's a supreme being that got you got you to this point. So. You've been able, and you see, where are you working now? I work, work for the city of Oxford. Work for the city. I work for Parson. You don't ride on the back of the truck, don't you? No. <laughs> no. I think they made that uh, a rule. Is that in your job description? No truck ride? Right? Yeah. They don't, yeah, they don't even let me drive a city vehicle. <laughs> do you have, uh, do you have any restriction thing you can't do? You drive and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And that's not, you know, and we all have different things uh, all of us uh, survivors that's not true for everybody but yeah. I have really no uh, re uh, restrictions yeah well, I've I had wanted, uh, I accommodations those, with school and stuff but I want those out there that's uh, that's watching us to say if you've got a son or a daughter that's got a TBI it's not the end of the world for always there is hope you know to keep going and yours is through therapy where did you say you got that in Atlanta I got it at the Shepherd Center in, Shepherd uh, Center Atlanta yeah and does you got a doctor over there by name that you know? Uh, well, mine was Dr. Ripley. Uh, he's at RIC in Chicago now. But uh, Don Leslie, he's the medical director at uh, Shepherd Center now, who was actually born in Anniston. And he works over there. Uh, there's a, several nurses. Uh, I told Kendra I would say oh, hello to her. Oh, let's get a nurse now. But they, <laughs> yeah, but they, but they did a great job, and they'll be the ones that, uh, are a testament to we're always learning about the brain and we're learning so much more about it every day. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a lot, the, the shaking baby syndrome, that falls into that, you know, mm -hmm. when you move that brain around that fast. And that's why the IED thing is throw somebody from left, right. But that don't mean they can't be uh, in a community, um, viable person in the community. We had a discussion with my pastor the other day. We're going to have I'm going to have him on here. We're going to talk about things like that. People get to the end of their rope because they feel like that they, you know, marriages fall apart because of they, what I was telling you about was uh, I know some personal instances where the TBI is a contributing factor to divorces because uh, the families do not understand TBI fully, you know, that surely somebody I talked to 10 minutes ago and they, surely they remember what I told them, to, you know, they just can't understand that. Out in the churches, people don't understand why you're different now than you were then. There don't mean nothing wrong with you if you're different. So that's uh, that's something we got to do. We got to teach, teach the community that that uh, traumatic brain injury is uh, something that can happen to anybody at any time. Falling off a truck, falling out of bed, you know, any number of things, car wrecks. Uh, well, and that's something that I don't uh, see either because I don't see my changes. I don't see where I've changed. The people around me do. The people that mm -hmm. were close to me 13 years ago, they see the changes. And they, you know, you know and thankfully, like I said, I have uh, had a great support group and they've pointed that out to me. If it's a bad change, a good change, or if it's a neutral change, they're going to tell me so well, I can, you know, hopefully. Knowing your mom and dad, you come from good stock. So you automatically came to this world with a good heart, but you've got a special good heart about helping others. And you and, you and I work on the weekends with uh, something that Ginger Monroe started here with this uh, league of our own. These unfortunate and sometimes fortunate. I mean, gosh, guys, these kids are, uh, they brighten a lot of lives. They don't know about, I guess, but uh, you, you're high end of that. Is it, what motivates you to do that? I just, you know, like you said earlier, I just have a heart for service. And I love those beautiful children. Mm -hmm. They are a blessing from God. They are. And they, you know, and they will brighten anyone's day. And I wish we would get all the volunteers. I wish the whole city of Oxford would come out there and see them play. Because mm -hmm. it is such a great thing. This is where a fly on the wall would come in handy. I would like to be a 
fly on the wall, but I wouldn't want to be the mom and dad of one of them that's ex they're so excited about it. I've had them tell me that when they know the night before, when they start getting their uniform, their shirts and stuff out, they know that tomorrow is ball day, that they're going to play ball. The excitement just rockets. And uh, I'd like to be a fly on the wall and watch that because we, we get front row seats out there every, every weekend. Uh, oh, and I just love it when some of them – you know, when they score and mm -hmm. you call them out, yo, you know, he's scoring, and then yeah. they go out and they raise their hands, and, you know, like, I'm the greatest in the world. And we, oh, yeah, we love that. Well, it, it's like the level to play and feel out. You know, it's like you got bumps <coughs> in your driveway and stuff, and, and, and uh, they, that league of our own just leveled it out. These kids are no different than the Braves or the uh, Red Sox or whatever. They just, uh, they it, to them, it's a big day, and... And I, I watch you. I see, you know, you get a big kick out of, uh, you don't know when I'm watching you, but uh, I, see, I can see in your heart that you are, you're really loving what they're doing out there. Well, and most of those kids just want the interaction. They just want to be with people. Yeah. And they want to go out and they want to have fun with people. And that's the great thing is everybody's having fun. They get a free uh, hot dog and chips and drink after their game. Well, I gave away, co I gave away uh, soft drinks out there one weekend, but <laughs> and got chewed out about it. I tell you, no. Ginger might have cut her eyes at you, right? Yeah, there. They, they were. Uh, that's their payday. That's their payday, man. I threw a bottle of water, man. I'd give them some substance to drink. Uh, the if there's a message out there for somebody who's dealing with a. Uh, traumatic brain injury child just for the first time, or an adult, what would you be your advice to them right now? I would say to cling to your support. You know, there's there there are groups out there, like like I said, the Alabama Head Injury Foundation, they have TR groups, and uh, do all, all the research, and lean, and, and lean on your doctors too, and your uh, therapist to let yeah. them know uh, what's going on, and make sure that you keep them apprised of what's going on, especially a loved one who's a caretaker for uh, a TBI survivor. Make sure that they, uh, you know, write it down yeah. and give it to the doctors so they can, yeah, you know, that, adjust some things. You said that I remember a lady that had a little boy that was like that, and she she started making notes all in between the visits. Sometimes it'd be a month of notes. She'd walk in there, and then they'd, she said, how's he been doing it? She said, well, first of all, he does, you know, just go off the laundry list of things. We got less than a minute. Uh, what what is the message out there you'd like to leave with the folks? There? Well, I just want to uh, make sure that they know that March is TBI Awareness Month, and there are more of us than they think. Uh, we we are survivors, uh, and it's an uphill battle for us. Just like you know, I mean, it's an uphill battle for everybody, but uh, we just want to be included and make sure that we have therapy and everything else. Well, you're included, so my friend. You. You've, uh, you've got made the battle uphill and for that, uh, congratulations. I'm gonna see you here next year. Let's talk about right. find what we're gonna talk about next year. Gotta go to a break, come back, we're gonna talk more with, uh, well, we're just gonna talk about news that you can use. We've got some good stuff for you. Stay where you are, get the pen. Be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Appreciate Josh Scraff coming in and doing the show today. We're talking about TBI, Traumatic Brain Injury Month, and uh, Y'all remember that every year, remember it every day. And if you uh, got any questions about that, you got someone who has it and you don't know what to do, uh, he mentioned the foundation, you uh, get in touch with me, I'll put you in touch with them. So if you got, sometimes uh, what we didn't talk about was you may have a child that has a traumatic brain injury and not know it. They may have done something to hurt yourself, fall in and acting a fool, and you're not aware of it. And, uh, and just, uh, Keep your eye on them, and if they act indifferent, you might need to get them to the head injury place. Uh, remember again that every week I tell you the address of the parking deck over at, uh, over at the VA in Birmingham, and believe it or not, I got two calls this week. Somebody on the road, what's the address of the parking garage? They want to put it in their GPS. So it's 2415 7th Avenue South, 2415 7th Avenue South there in Birmingham. That's the new parking garage. And again, I talked to the uh, public affairs director yesterday. Uh, we will be having a director down here probably in April. So uh, if you got any questions for the VA director, a director of VA hospital, you get them to me, and I will uh, uh, ask him those in, on the show. Uh, Steve Hale the, of Hale Building is uh, starting the effort up there to, to build the Alabama's Law Enforcement Memorial. 
we're going to have it available to unveil on the 13th of May. So uh, that's a big deal. Thanks to Bill Partridge of the Oxford Chief of Police for designing that tag. Thanks to Randy Wood for getting the tag through the legislature. The, the uh, revenue from that is what we're building, using to build that uh, memorial with. Uh, the bad news I've got for you is what I have every week, and I'm not going to stop because it's not stopping. We have 22 veterans every day. We lose 22 uh, veterans to suicide every day. And uh, there are some things that we can do as a community uh, to understand what's causing some of that, and uh, some of it has to do with economics. And some of it has to do with some of the things we talked about here today. It's TBI and things like that, PTSD that uh, they get on the battlefield. So if you're interested in getting involved in uh, your church or someone wants to get involved in that, uh, give me a call. I'm going to have my pastor on here. We're going to be talking about that before long. I want to talk about the Kia stores of Aniston and uh, Gadsden. They are better known. One of the, Don Hopkins, is the, uh, he's a special forces guy. I hate special forces. No. But anyhow. Uh, they take care of the veterans, they take care of first responders and law enforcement. So, uh, the Kia stores down on South Quintard. Now, that Senate Bill of 287 by Senator Pittman is still going through to, to rob the veterans' funds and put it out there to build uh, four prisons. Prisoners before veterans is what it, I call it. Uh, Senate Bill 287, if you get a chance, make a phone call to tell your senator, and I've asked mine on, a answering, on his answering machine to stop it. He can, but he hasn't. Um, senator, Senate Bill 287, that, that will stop the veterans from getting into veterans' homes, free burial, the whole thing. It's just a shame that we have to be fighting legislation like that that's, uh, that's against Alabama veterans. So. Remember that, and if you got any questions about it, give me a call. I'll show you the bill. It's, uh, it's, and our senator's not stepping up to the plate. We need him to do that. Uh, this week, I'm going to go out the uh, phone call to, uh, salute's going to go out to everybody who has called their legislature grumbling about that bill. And uh, if you've done that, thank you for that. We'll see you next year, next, <laughs> next week. We'll see you here next week on Veterans Issues. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you then.